Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, this tutorial is filled with so much content, I don't even know what to call it. I'm showing you how to layer vinyl. I'm showing you how to create your own mirrored font. I'm showing you how to download a font. I'm showing you how to extract a font and how to upload it into Cricut Design Space. I'm showing you how to make um, just multiple things in this one tutorial, but the finished product is a design that looks like this. And I don't know if this is called an echo font or a mirrored font. You can call it whatever you choose, whatever you like, but I love this design. I did not purchase this. This is another one of those tutorials where I said, I saw something that I like and I decided that I wasn't gonna purchase it. I would make it. And because I learned how to make it, I want to teach you how to make it. Knowledge is power. Let me give you the knowledge. Without further ado, let's look at the materials. After the materials, we will look at how to access the font.com and how to download a file font, how to upload it into Cricut Design Space. After that, we will move on to Cricut Design Space. I will show you how I created this design so you can make one of your own. After that, I will show you how I got all of my pieces cut out on placed on my mat. I use my Cricut Explore Air 2 for this. And then after that, I will show you my process for layering the vinyl, layering the HTV so that it could be pressed. And I slowed it down in this video so you could see exactly how long I pressed each layer because I didn't want you to be confused about, well, how long do I press the bottom layer? And how long do I press the top layer? I want you to see the full process. So this video is a little bit longer than usual, but it is filled with good content. So without further ado, let's get started. In order to complete this project, I used a black gilded heavy cotton medium shirt. I used three green standard grip mats, just like this. I use three different colors of Caesar Easy Weed and one, um, so the first color is Lilac. I use Caesar Wicked Purple and I use the Caesar Glitter HTV. I use my Cricut Ruler. I use my Pin Pin Weeding Tool, my True Control, my Cricut True Control Knife. I use some masking tape to tape my vinyl down to my mat. And I also used parchment paper to protect each of the layers as they were being pressed. The font that I used, I downloaded it from thefont.com. It is one that's called Bouncy. Hopefully my face is not too shiny. I do feel like I'm, it's hot up here in my crafting room. And my heat press, I use my 15 by 15 clamshell heat press. The machine that I was connected to for this project was my Cricut Explore Air 2, but you could also do this from a Cricut Maker. You also do not have to have a 15 by 15 clamshell. You could very well do this from a Cricut 9 by 9 Easy Press. You could also do this with a household iron. I would turn your iron up to the highest setting, especially for the glitter vinyl, because you will have to press it for a while and make sure you give it good firm pressure. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to see how to download the font from defont.com. After that, we'll move over to Cricut Design Space. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is search for the font and download it from defont.com. So if you're unfamiliar with defont.com, it is a website that offers access to tons, and I do mean tons, literally tons of free fonts for personal use. I say personal use because if you are planning to make anything that you are going to sell, then you would have to, you know, look at the options so that you can either donate to the author or purchase the file in some way, purchase the fonts in some way. Every time I use fonts from here is for my personal use. So the font that I'm going to show you how to download today is one that is called Bouncy. So I'm gonna look for it and see if I can find it here, okay? So this is the font, it's called Bouncy by Mans Greyback. Greyback. I'm going to click download, okay? Once I click download, you'll see a folder, okay? And that folder means that it's still not downloaded, I still have more to do. The next thing I have to do is extract it. So I'm going to click extract all, I'm going to browse, 
and I am going to just put it on my desktop for, well, let me put it on my fonts folder and the name of this font, I'm going to give it a new folder. This one is called bouncy. Okay. So I'm going to click that folder. I'm going to choose select folder. And now when my font is downloaded or extracted, it will go into a folder that is ready for it. Okay, so now I can click on that file. I'm gonna click on the one that is the open type font file. Okay, and I will double click it and I'll see that it comes up. It's still not installed. I will click install. Okay, and it's going to do whatever it's doing and then it will be installed on my computer. I want the one that I have is the bouncy for personal use open type font. Okay, so I'm gonna close all of this out and now I'm gonna show you what I have to do after I have it downloaded and extracted. Now it's on my computer, but it is still not in Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I am connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. The first thing that I'll do is upload the font into Cricut Design Space that I've just downloaded. So I will go to text. I'm gonna make sure my caps lock is on and I'm going to type the word that I have decided to use for this tutorial. And the word that I've decided to use is blessed, not boost. Okay and I am just going to move it here to the center of my screen and I will then increase, um, I'll go to look for that font that remember is called bouncy. Okay. And I will move it over to the top left. Okay. So once I have it, I'm also going to increase the letter space of it because right now all of these letters are touching and they're very, very close together. So I'm gonna increase the letter space to right at 0.4. You can move yours out even more if you choose to do that. Right now mine is at 0.4 and I will um, unlock the whole thing, my whole word right here, and I will resize the width to 10.5 and the height will be 4.0, just for right now, okay? It's not gonna stay that size, but that's the size that I want it right now. All right, so now that I have that, I'm going to bring the view down on my canvas. Right now, the view is at 100%. I'm gonna bring the view down to right at about 25%, and I wanna keep this here in the corner, and you'll see why in a minute. Now I'm going to duplicate this word two times. So I'm gonna go over here to my right to the layers panel and I'm gonna click the duplicate button twice. One, two. Okay, and I'm just gonna move my two duplicates over here to the right. So I have three things on my screen. I have one word over here to the top left and then two words over here to the right. Okay, now I'm my view is at 25%. I'm going to select this image in the top left. And right now with this image selected, I have three choices down here at the bottom right. I have the option to weld, attach, or flatten. I am going to choose weld, okay? So right now this one is welded. These two are still considered as basic cuts. Going back to my welded image. At the bottom right, right now, I have the option to contour this image that is welded. So I'm going to click on the button for contour, okay? And hopefully you can see now why I moved that image to the top left because I wanted to be able to see what was going on with that image. What I'm going to do now is click this button that says hide all contours, okay? And I want to have just the top um, option open and this second option but I'm also going to open these, the inner parts of the letter. So inside the B, hopefully you can see what's going on right here on my screen, and the inner parts of the S, of both S's, and the inner part of the D. Okay, so now I should have one word that says blessed, and it should be completely filled in, and that's exactly what I have. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, so I should still have three things on my screen now. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a shape from the shapes tool. I'm going to grab a rectangle. I'm going to move the rectangle down and I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to resize it to 12 for the width and 1.5 for the height. Okay, so 12 by 1.5. The view on my screen is still at 25%. Okay, at this point, I recommend that you click save. I'm going to call this blessed <laughs> in progress. You can call yours whatever you know you want to call it. All right, so now I have this one rectangle. I'm also going to duplicate this two more times, okay? I might not need all three, but just in case I do, I'll have it. So I'm gonna click with this rectangle selected. I'm gonna click duplicate, duplicate. And okay? I'm just move these over because I don't need them just right, right yet. All right, so now I'm going to take one of my words, one of my words that says blessed, and I'm going to take this rectangle right here, and I am going to move it to the top of the word blessed. Okay, so now I just have the word and I have a rectangle on the top of it. I'm going to select the rectangle and the word. I'm going to go up to align, and I'm going to go to align top. That means I want the rectangle to be aligned to the top of the word. Okay, now what I'm going to do with the rectangle aligned to the top of the word is I'm going to slice it. Okay, once I do that, now I can move the bottom of this word right over here. Okay, and I still have the top of the word that I'm just going to put it right here at the bottom for now. I can delete this and I can delete this. Okay, so now let me move all of this over so you can see it better. Okay, so now I'm going to take the second word and I'm going to take this rectangle and I want to align it. I'm going to put it on the bottom of my word. I want to go select the whole thing and I'm going to choose align, align bottom. Okay, and with both of these selected, I'm going to choose to slice it. Okay, so now I have the top of the word. I'm going to put it right here at the top. And now I also have the bottom right here, okay? So this is, I don't need this and I don't need this. So now I can move the bottom of this word right down here to the bottom. And I can move the top of this right over here to the top, okay? With all of this selected, so now I have everything. I have my the main word, which is blessed. And I have what looks like an echo and I have it twice. Now, if you wanted to do yours more than what I've done, you could just, you could, you could keep those parts that I chose to delete, or you can, you know, du um, duplicate the word and slice it again. I'm choosing to keep mine like this because I actually like the way that it looks like this. Okay. So now I have everything aligned. I'm going to choose the align button. And I'm going to select the option to distribute horizontally. Okay, so now that lines everything up. And I'm also going to choose the option to center horizontally. Okay, so now everything is centered and everything is equally distributed. Okay, I really like the way this looks. Okay, so now that I have it the way that I want it to look, for now, I'm going to delete this rectangle because I don't need it. What I'm going to do just for now is I'm going to just group this so that it all stays together. I'm going to grab a template and I'm going to look for the one that looks like a t-shirt. The one that says classic t-shirts. Remember, this is not going to cut out in any way. This is really just a, a, a virtual image to help you get your sizing correctly for your shirt okay so now the shirt size that I need is a women's short sleeve medium okay and when I look at this this image looks a little bit long in my opinion so what I'm going to do since this whole thing is grouped is I'm going to resize it I'm going to bring this down 
I actually like the width is the height that I want to change. I want to change the height to 11.5 and I like that. I like the way this looks very much. Okay. And if I'm going to put this on a shirt, which I am in this tutorial, I'm going to put this on a shirt and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use three different colors of purple. I'm going to use a lilac purple for the top and bottom. I'm going to use a darker purple for these two inner pieces. And for this bold piece that's filled in, I'm going to use a glitter purple. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is ungroup this. Okay. And I want to click on this top layer. I'm going to hold my shift key. And I'm also going to click on the bottom layer. Okay. And I want to attach those pieces okay so when those attach this is what they look like okay okay so now that i have let me move them let me just move them right back to where they were now i'm going to click on let me just hide those for one second now i'm going to click on this layer i'm going to hold my shift key click on the bottom layer and i'm going to attach those okay so those look like this Okay, let me move it back. All right, and then for this, you know, that, that middle piece, that is just one piece that's already um, welded. So it looks exactly like I want it to look already. So now I can turn these back on and I can go ahead and click make it. Okay, so now I know for a fact that this, this bottom layer right here, or this piece right here, this piece is going to be a lilac, like a lilac purple, okay? So I want that to be on one mat. And then I have this part right here. This is going to be a darker purple, so it's gonna be right there. And then I have my main piece, the piece that is welded. I'll just click this one for now, but this will be my um, glitter purple, okay? So now that I have everything the way that I want it, let me go ahead and click save again and i am going to just keep it um, save it just the way it, that it is now that i have my design exactly how i want it i am going to click make it okay and i see that i have three mats and that's exactly what i want um i am going to move my i'm going to move this down a little bit and I'm going to actually move all of them down. Somebody asked me why I do that. Just because I want to. I just prefer to move it down. Now this one I won't be able to move down. Because um, it's already as far as it will go. But I will go ahead and turn on the mirror option for all three of my mats. Okay. So this one is asking me to cut the bold piece first. And I'm fine with that. It really doesn't matter which order I cut them in, especially since this one is going to be my glitter vinyl. Okay. So let me click. It says a Bluetooth connection is recommended. It is connected by Bluetooth. Okay. All right. I am going to choose glitter iron on and I'm going to give it um, more pressure. And sometimes with glitter vinyl, I will use my deep point blade, but for this, I'm going to just use my regular fine point blade with more pressure. So I will get all three of my mats loaded and I will show you what that looks like. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I have all three of my mats ready. This is my glitter vinyl. Remember your vinyl goes on your mat with the shiny side down. And I have some tape on here because this mat is not as sticky as my other mats. And this is just a way to protect it and make sure that my vinyl doesn't come up while it's being cut. Let me add one more little piece because I already heard a little issue. Let me unload it and just add one more little piece up here at the top. Okay, we'll get it loaded again. This will actually be my first layer 
And since none of the vinyl is actually going to be touching each other, I don't have to worry about the, you know, the layering effect and having to tack it and then re-tack and all of that. Not necessarily because I'm not really going to mess any of this up. I don't want to waste any of this inside vinyl. So what I'm, that's my printer turning off. What I'm going to do is just cut off. I'm going to cut the inner pieces, but not cut them. Just to leave the outside piece. So I'm going to take all of this up and save it for another project. And I will get the rest of this weeded out using my pen pen weeding tool. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. I actually weeded the wrong part. So I'm going to cut another piece and get it weeded out and put it in the right place. So right here, I already have all three mats weeded out. What I'm going to do is just double check the Caesar heat guide settings to make sure my temperature is correct. I realize you can't see it, so I sped this part up. So I'm going to reduce my heat settings to 300 degrees for the first two layers. And then when I get to the glitter, I'm going to increase the temperature to 320 degrees. And I'll show you all of that once I get over to the heat press. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just double checking the settings reading it and getting ready for the actual heat press. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold my shirt in half and get a crease down the middle. This is uh, just a black medium shirt I'm using my Starcraft 15 by 15. My heat press is set to 315 degrees and I have my um, timer set for five seconds. Okay, so now that I have a crease down the middle, I know exactly where my design should go. So I have the first piece on and what I've decided to do, instead of putting this piece on and hoping that it's lined up, I'll put this piece on after I add the middle piece. So I have a piece of parchment paper. My temperature is set to 300 degrees. I'm just gonna cover this with parchment paper and I'm gonna press it for five seconds, just to tack it down. And Caesar definitely allows, um, it has some forgiveness because it is a warm peel vinyl anyway. And since it's only been a few seconds, I consider this warm. So far, so good. So I'm gonna press that middle piece next and I'll just get this lined up. Ooh, that's looking really, really good. It's looking really, really good. My parchment paper is gonna cover the whole thing, five seconds. I love Caesar. This is why I love this vinyl. This is why. This is why. Oh my goodness. This is looking really good. 
Now I'll put this bottom piece down because I know I can line it up. And I won't have an issue. All right. Look at how good that looks. Parchment paper. Five seconds. When I looked at Caesar's website, it said that it uh, one to two seconds was enough to tack your vinyl down. That's, that's impressive. But to me, one to two seconds is just kind of too risky. So I wouldn't want to do one to two seconds. Now I'm gonna bring the temperature up on my heat press because I'm using glitter vinyl. And glitter vinyl, remember, is a 320 degrees. So I'm going up to 320. Let me make sure. Glitter vinyl, 320 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to do this one for 20. I'm going to do it for 20 seconds. Okay. Go ahead and put it down. I'll let my heat press heat up. This looks so amazing. This looks so amazing. What would have been even more amazing if I would have put a white offset around my uh, glitter vinyl that would have looked really nice, but it's too late now. It's too late now. My heat press is on 320 degrees. I set my timer for 20 seconds. I have my parchment paper protecting my shirt and my other vinyl that's already pressed. And this will ensure that all of my vinyl is adhered properly. Let's see. Ooh, that looks so good. Ooh, that looks so good. I just turn it this way? What if I just turn it this way? Let you see it, Rilla Rilla God. Oh, that looks so good. That looks amazing. I am in love. I am in love. I am in love. Hey. This is the finished product. And what am I going to say? I love it. I love it. I absolutely love the way this turned out. Okay, so this is my finished product. And as I've already stated when we were over at the heat press, I love it. I love the way this turned out. And uh, even though I wish I had put an offset around the glitter part, I still love it even without that. Um, and if you found this tutorial helpful, if you learned something, you know, type in a comment, leave me a comment and let me know something that you learned today in this tutorial. And if you found it helpful, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.